What is going on, everyone? And welcome to another episode of the Mars Pod. I am your host, as always, Nathan Marzan, joined by Brandon Eckel. We got some stuff to get to, some Bucks off-season stuff to get to. And we're also going to rank our favorite to least favorite, actually least favorite to favorite, Bucks playoff games from this past um, playoffs. A lot of games to get to, a lot of stuff to get to, off-season stuff to talk about. So let's jump right into it and get to the off-season moves and give, you know, we'll give some grades for each move, kind of just our brief thoughts and everything. So to start off, um, to begin the off-season, I think it was the first day of free agency, the Bucks re-signed Bobby Portis, two years, nine million. And I give this an A plus um, right away just because Bobby took less than he even had to take. I mean, he declined his player option, which was for uh, 3.8 million, making him an unrestricted free agent. Everyone kind of knew he was going to do that, but he could have taken even more and you know gone into that mid-level exception. And he just, he was willing to stay for even less than that at just 4.5 a year. I think he could have got 5.9. Um, so this was like best case scenario for the Bucks, and. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, he was awesome. Obviously last year in the playoffs really became a fan favorite. Any, you know, any gripes about this, there's really none. Like there's nothing to dislike about this. It's, and it's good for Bobby in the long run too, because, you know, it helps us in the short run. We don't have to pay him as much, but in the long run, um, he now has early bird rights. He can opt out next off season and get an even bigger contract later than he would have gotten now. So it helps the bucks. Now it helps him later. Great for both sides. I love it. Yeah, same here, and I'd give his same grade A. And obviously, like, his energy he brings and just kind of the, <clears throat> I don't know, energy, intensity, whatever you want to say, um, you know, hard work, battling, scrapping for the loose balls, that type of thing, stuff that's not in the stats. So really yeah, happy to be back. And we obviously saw, the, you know, the whole crowd chanting Bobby in the playoffs and stuff. And I said, hey, any pending free agents, we should just chant their name in the playoffs in Deer District and get them to say, hey, this – Milwaukee loves me. I'm going to sign for even less than I need to <laughs> Good work in the future with, with other free agents. But um, no, obviously everyone actually does love Bobby and just awesome to see him back. So the, the two main moves we needed to make were re-sign Bobby Portis, re-sign P.J. Tucker. We got the first one, but then P.J. Tucker signs with the Heat, two years, 15 million. And this one was frustrating to me because we could have we could have offered him more. And I mean, this was there's really no other way to look at it other than they wanted to not pay, you know, the tax of it. And it would have, I mean, I, I, I get it from the standpoint of it would have increased their tax by like $30 million or $40 million, whatever it was. So I get from the owner's standpoint, them not wanting to pay $40 million for a, you know, old player like that. But I'm also never going to be on the side of like billionaire saving money personally. Yeah. But I mean, I get it from their side. It, it just was frustrating me because he was very important in this playoff run that he's not really replaceable in what he brings of that. that I, there was nobody that we could really bring in that was going to give you that intensity defensively, the ability to, I mean, he really slowed down Kevin Durant in quite a few games. Katie's still going to get his numbers, obviously. When you look at his numbers, it looks fine. It looks like PJ did nothing. But go back and watch games three or four of that series and look at how you know well he played defensively. I mean, he, he made him work. And just the dog in, in him that he brings – not something that you can really replace. So to me, I mean, it was frustrating that they were just kind of willing to let him go. But I'm also not going to complain too much because I think the third highest tax paying team in the NBA right now, they just didn't want to go up even further. So it, it's frustrating, but I, I do understand what they were doing there. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on it. Yeah, I mean, somewhat the same as you. Um, obvious, like, part of me thinks he's worth that much and the other part of me is like, Eh, like you can kind of throw money a little bit elsewhere, which is what we did. And I do feel like, um, you know, there's a couple guys, I mean, mainly one guy that's not going to completely fill the void of Tucker, but like probably brings a little more potential on offense and can somewhat fill the void on defense. Not the scrapping, it's not the tipping loose balls or, uh, you know, 50-50 rebounds that Tucker did. Um, but there's a guy I'm sure we'll talk about that I think can kind of fill in. Yeah, and real quick, someone said, I'm assuming you're ranking just Bucks games. Yes, we are. The Bucks playoff games, um, 23 to 1, basically, because they had 23 playoff games. <clears throat> but really quick, back to PJ, like pe people were saying, you know, oh, is he, this is fine. He's not really worth that. And I get that. He might not end up being worth the contract, but the, he had bird rights. And that's what was frustrating to me. He had bird rights. We, you know, that, that doesn't go to someone else. You don't get to now save money to pay, if, with, to pay someone else with. 
Um, if that was the case, then I can understand them saying, hey, he's old. He might not, you know, he's going to regress. You know, let's sign someone else instead. But it was like they could have just gotten him without really affecting the cap. It was all just a tax thing. And again, I, I kind of went over that. I, I, I understand their thought process behind it, but I'm not necessarily going to support that. Um, mm -hmm. But as you mentioned, they did bring in someone who can kind of fill that role in semi Um This was like, like, I don't think he's going to be PJ Tucker. Um, I mean, he, he can somewhat fit that mold. He's been known as a good defensive player for you know his career. And he's a, he's a pretty good shooter over his last two seasons, shooting 37% from three. And I mean, he is playable in the playoffs, like against a team, you know, like the Nets, that's pretty much what I was saying is any guy we sign, the main thing you're looking for is, are they playable in a series against the Nets? Um, mm -hmm. like that's kind of what you look for. If they're not, then they're really not going to give you much. Like you're not going to get much out of them because you ultimately need them to be able to be played in those big games against the Nets and in those big playoff series. Um, Semi Ojale definitely is. I don't think we can expect a whole lot offensively similar to PJ. I don't think he's going to give you quite the defense of PJ, but someone who can just kind of fill that role. Um, we got him on a minimum deal. So it's a it's a suitable replacement for PJ Tucker. I, I graded it as a B minus. You know, I, I don't think he's a particularly great player, but in terms of filling that role, I think it's it's a solid move. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go go crazy about it, but I'm also not gonna complain too much about it. Yeah, I'd be right around the same grade C plus B minus. I think for the aspect of like where he can fill in as like oh just to play, you know, maybe fifteen minutes or put him in five minutes here and then five minutes in the third to you know, kind of how like teams in the past have had that Giannis stop or like and then people are like, oh he's you know, like obviously from a Bucks perspective, it's like, oh he didn't really stop him, but making things more difficult, stuff like that. You can just put Ojale out there, be like, okay, he's playing man to man on KD, he's guarding, you know, James Harden, whatever, and you don't have to worry about guys, um, somebody else like a Middleton or a Giannis using their energy. Um, you can throw him out there and he can just put all of his energy pretty much on defense. And you're not really taking minutes away the way PJ kind of did because, you know, you play him 30, 35 minutes, you're not getting much offense from him. That's a lot. You cut that in half, play Ojale about 15, you you know, you're going to have guys to step up there. So I like the move from what we needed, but obviously nothing crazy. And good that we got him for minimum. Yeah. And, I mean, back to you said Giannis Stopper. He has been known as the Giannis Stopper. And, again, you're obviously never going to stop Giannis, but – someone like Peter Tucker who can kind of just slow down that opposing superstar a little bit. That's kind of what you're looking for out of him. So hopefully you can bring that. Now we get to our next signing, which was Rodney Hood on the minimum. This one was surprising. Like I did not expect yeah. them to go after Rodney Hood. But looking at it, it does seem like a low risk, high reward type of signing. Um, Rodney Hood tore his Achilles in December of 2019. And then last year had the worst year of his career. Um, you know, he shoot 30% from three, just like he did not play well. And, this did kind of allow the Bucks to swoop in and buy low, um, signing to a minimum deal. And it's like if he can return somewhat back to form, you know, he was a guy that in his career before that injury in 2019 was averaging 12 and a half points, 37% from three, a, you know, decent defender. He's not going to kill you defensively. He's, he can be played defensively. Mm -hmm. And if he can get back to anywhere close to that, like that's a bargain at the minimum. And if he doesn't, it's like, okay, you just we're paying a minimum deal. And he's still someone I think you can have out there for, you know, small stretches. Um, as a, it, as guard depth, but um, after losing Brent Forbes, it's like you kind of needed some type of scoring, shooting off the bench. Um, Hood is six eight, so again, he can be played out there. You know, defensively, it's not like he's too. You know, he's a he's a forward kind of uh, kind of size wise, so he's easily playable. He's not someone who's going to um, not get any minutes. He should be someone, as we mentioned before, who can play in a series against the Nets. So I'm fine with it. Again, low risk, high reward. Even if he doesn't turn out, you're not using a lot on him. Uh, you know, you're just kind of uh, hoping he can potentially get to somewhat close to what he was before. And if he does, you've got a huge deal. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't have too much to add to that. Um, obviously, kind of like you said, um, with the, you know, low risk, high reward, he's kind of a guy where it's like, all right, if he's playing good, you know, it's a huge help for such a small contract. And if he's not, he's on the bench. And quite frankly, that's a good guy to have at the end of the bench because, a lot better than most teams 10th 11th guy whatever he would be if he's struggling otherwise he could fit a nice role player mo uh role player role so hopefully that'll be the case but we'll see yeah and i know people right away when they saw we signed him you know you look at his number from last year not good but again remember he tore his achilles he was not really the same player so you're hoping he can maybe return to what he was um before that injury 
And then next up, the Bucks are bringing back George Hill. I was super hyped when this happened. And um, going back to you know the very beginning of the offseason, it was my biggest need for the Bucks was a backup point guard, someone who you could trust. Jeff Teague was not quite that. Um, you know, he, I, I don't. Jeff Teague wasn't like awful, awful. He had his moments, but he just wasn't someone you can put out there for long stretches and really trust to like run the show a little bit. Um, again, games. We'll always remember Game Six against Atlanta. <laughs> and we'll get to that later. We'll get to that game later. But George Hill is someone they, you know, two years, eight million. We signed him for. He's someone who you know they went into the the mid level exception to pay him. And he's someone who I think really can fill that role like to a T as he did a couple years ago with the Bucks when he was like the number one three point shooter in the league for a while. And I mean, he can handle the ball. Um, he can shoot. He has veteran, you know, the veteran intelligence and he brings defense, like really everything you kind of need, he's going to bring. And so as far as an option to really fill that backup point guard role, like I don't think it gets a ton better than George Hill career 38% three point shooter. And over the past two seasons, he's 44% from three and 48% on catch and shoot threes. Like he's just a good shooter and someone who, again, all I, all I need is a backup point guard who when Drew is on the bench, I'm comfortable with them having, like having them out there handling the ball. And he can even play alongside Drew. But my main thing is like, I just want someone who I'm not like, oh my God, Drew's out. We are, we have no ball handler. We have nobody who I like to bring the ball up. Um, Hill really does fit that, fit that backup point guard. Um, roll well for the box, I think. So um, as far as a grade, by the way, I didn't I didn't get to a grade for the Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood, I give a B. This one I'm giving a B plus. So yeah, I'd give this one B plus, maybe even an A, A minus, whatever you want to say. Um I I would personally was surprised that he went for this low um contract wise, but I get I don't know, maybe just because he's getting a little older. Um I mean I don't know his numbers from last year, but I don't think he had a bad year with Philly. Um, well, he I, wasn't, I mean, he wasn't anything crazy, but, like, he was perfectly suitable. Uh, he had six points, 39% from three, um, two assists. I mean, he only played 18 minutes a game, so he wasn't, like, playing a ton. But see, just, again, he, he gives you the shooting, and he gives you, like, he's not going to turn the ball over. He's just a good player to have out there as a backup winger. Right, and, I mean, I think – He'll play more minutes with us. Obviously, I know we have Drew Holiday, but like, there's gonna be times they probably could play them together. Um, it doesn't really matter who brings a ball up the court. And um, I mean, it just he he maybe didn't fit a, the role great with Philly, or just you know they didn't know how to use him. I guess I don't know how to explain it, but great to have him back. Loved him. Obviously, played great for us. So really good get for a backup point guard. And then we move into our final. So they kind of had their roster somewhat set and then we get into um this was two weeks ago a week ago that this happened they had a trade for grayson allen giving up sam merrill and two future second round picks that they acquired in the trade on draft night and going back to the draft night trade like when that happened i was pretty vocal on twitter about like i was kind of upset because there were plenty of guys i really liked that ended up falling 231 jared butler iota sumu um, Deuce McBride, Sharif Cooper, like those guys were, and that was the only reason I was really upset is I'm like, there's specific guys that I think you can put in an NBA game very quickly to play backup point guard and play it well. And who, you know, as a, as a rookie have the potential to become even more. So I was upset, you know, them trading 31 for 54, 60 and two seconds. I was like, I feel like they could have got more. So I just was a little bit upset, but they ended up getting, you know, Mamu Kalashvili with the 54th pick. Um, I think it's pronounced Yurgis Kalitzakis with the 60th pick. And they get those two future seconds and they flip those future seconds into a proven, you know, guard in Grace now. And so I'm now okay with that trade after they, after they turn it into someone who's kind of proven that you can play um, at backup guard. Like now I'm okay with it. Cause that's kind of all I wanted with that 31st pick. And so last year at Memphis, uh, Grayson started 30 out of 50 games. 10.6 points, 3.2 rebounds, 2.2 assists, 39% from three. And he's a good catch and shoot uh, three point guy. And so he, like, I, I think he's an above average defender. He always gives, you know, that effort on both ends. He's been known as that for his entire career. Someone who people are going to take some time to get to, you know, like Grace Allen because everyone's always kind of, he, he's the guy that you hate when you're not, he's not on your team, but you're yeah. on your team. 
So it's going to take some time to really, for a lot of people to start rooting for him. I love him because he beat the Badgers in the national championship, but I know many people are on the opposite side of that. So, but through these trades, I mean, they really basically got Grace and Allen and even a little bit more for that 31st pick, which is like, that's really good to me. I'll, I'll take that all day. Um, so it, based on, you know, the, the trades that happen, I'm okay with how they ended up using that 31st pick in the end. So I'm grading this trade at A minus, and I'm excited to have Grayson just as as more guard depth and potentially even becoming a starter like over Dante at some point. Maybe they're very kind of similar, mm -hmm. but I don't know. It depends kind of how Dante's looking coming off the injury and if Grayson really thrives. Like he could definitely take over as a potential starter. Yeah, I could definitely see you know maybe Dante coming off the bench, but I'll but you know that would be fine because you know. Him, George Hill, Bobby, like that would be a really nice bench group. Um, I would give this probably a B because I was kind of the same as you. There's a lot of guys I was excited for at 31. Um, but, you know, I feel like they're like, well, we just won a title. Great chance to go back to back. This just feels like we have a really good, obviously, starting five and then really a, a really good bench five. So it's like we're in the win now mode, even though we just won. So it's like, you know, like McBride, for instance, I know you and I both really like him. And even though he probably, you know, he might have a really nice year um, and he could somewhat be ready to play. Allen's got like three years under his belt, you know, just more proven. Like you said, I mean, almost 40 percent from three is huge. Um, had a really good shooting year last year. So I think it was a really good move. Obviously, I love Sam Merrill as well, but to get Grace Nail out of it, can't complain. Yeah, and so now, I mean, looking back at the whole offseason, like the offseason as a whole, I do think the Bucks right now on paper are better than they were last year. I mean, yep. losing P.J. was tough, but you bring back Bobby Portis, which is the most important thing to do. You get guys who can kind of replace the bench production they lost with P.J. and Bryn Forbes in, you know, Sammy Ojale and Rodney Hood. You get that backup ball handler, which I think is, you know, now an improved backup ball handler compared to last year in George Hill. And you turn that 31st pick into a proven player with Grayson Allen, plus you get, you know, Sandro as a potential piece. Um, so I think, you know, we knew that core going into the offseason. We knew the core is going to stay together. They're under contract for a while. But the supporting cast and bench, I mean, it looks deeper, better, you know, even now a little bit younger than it was last season. So I'm I'm, I'm happy with where we're at overall, given the, the overall offseason, I'll give it a B plus and – I mean, really the only big gripe I have is losing PJ, but it's not, you know, again, they, they were kind of able to replace that a little bit. And I get that they didn't completely want to go, you know, crazy, crazy into the tax. So B plus overall. And um, I'm, I'm liking, I mean, it, again, they look better on paper than they did even last year. Yeah, I totally agree. I'd probably give it an A just because I really like our depth overall. Um, but obviously, like you said, no crazy moves, but we've also have, a lot of guys locked up for a lot of money, so you can't afford to do that. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm super happy with it. Looks great on paper. Hopefully, it'll just be as good on the court. All right. Are you ready for playoff rank? Playoff yes. Rankings? All right, let's get into it. So, we got this little chart here. Basically, we've broken these down. So, there's 23 playoff games the Bucks played. We're going to go through and go, you know, one by one, 23 down to one. We do have tiers in there. If you're watching, you can see the, um, the little blue lines are like separating. Like we each have some tiers of, okay, these games could be swapped around. They're kind of in the same category, same tier. But we're just going to go through and rank every game. And let's start with number 23. I think we can, I think we're both going to agree on what number 23 is. But um, hmm. I'll let, I'll let you go first. I want to hear what you said. Now you got to be curious. Um, I have game two. At Brooklyn. Really? Okay. That's what Pack Buck Backer has. Also, uh, just before we kind of get started, if you want to add one more break for me. One more break? break? Yeah. Let's right, do – uh, so I have top two, and then there should be four, so three, four, five, six. So kind of a break between six and seven. Okay. Thanks. I just kind of separated it, so. So you have that number one um, – Brooklyn game two, not a bad, not a bad pick, but it's definitely not mine. And it, it part of this is, it, I mean, it does depend if you're talking about in the moment or in the when you look back on it. In the moment, undoubtedly number one for me 
is game four against Atlanta. Mm -hmm. When Giannis gets hurt and it looked like the season is over and everything, you know, the world was just, the world was ending. And it, I mean, I was so upset. I didn't even finish watching that game when Giannis got hurt. I knew they were getting blown out, but game four against Atlanta was easily like in the moment, the worst for me. So I'm getting, I'm, I'm putting that one at 23. Yeah. What is your, what is your 22? I have Atlanta game four at 22. Okay. Um, obviously that was up there, but just thought that Brooklyn game, you know, getting your butts kicked, going down 0-2, it just kind of was like, oh, sh like maybe we won't be able to get past them. No, yeah. I mean, I agree. I agree for sure. My – there's even another game, though, that I think should be above that. I have it in a separate tier even. <laughs> my 22, my second worst game of the playoffs, game five against Brooklyn, which, again, in the moment, not it, it, was, it was even up there with that game four, like, Just the way they blew it, a 17-point lead. Giannis fumbles the ball late, shoots that fadeaway against injured Harden, and he was just getting criticized endlessly after that game. That one and, you know, Giannis getting hurt were the two that, like, after that game, I was just, the next day, like, I was depressed. I was, it really, really, really affected me. And those were, like, you know, it just felt like, it felt like the season was about to end with both of those games. So to me, those were the two worst, I think, and I'm putting those in I'm putting them in the same tier. But I think I mean Giannis getting hurt is the worst to me. Mm -hmm. Because that even had the the future implications attached to it of, you know, is he gonna be out all of next year? But man, that Brooklyn game five was like I was ready. We were I'm we were in Milwaukee, I mean I'm in Milwaukee, and I was ready to like go downtown and celebrate. My friends were all like, Hey, if they win, we're celebrating, they're up 17. I'm like, oh man, like I'm going to, as soon as this game ends, I'm going downtown because I got to celebrate. <laughs> and it just slowly but surely it crumbled away. And Katie ended up with 49, 17, and 10. And that was the game where Giannis called him the best player in the world. And yeah, just a, <laughs> just a mess. They were, I was like, if we hadn't won that Brooklyn series, this, that game would be looked at as like one of the like worst Bucks losses in, you know, and for sure in recent memory, but in yeah. even long memory, like how you let that game slip away. And, Luckily, they won in seven, so we don't have to worry about it. But we'll move on to year number 21. 21, I have year 22, Brooklyn game five. All right, good. At least you have those all in. At least you have my two least favorite in your bottom tier as well. So that is your your bottom tier is Brooklyn game two, Atlanta game four, Brooklyn game five. My bottom tier is Atlanta game four and Brooklyn game five. And we now move into my second worst year. <laughs> And I have to start off the second worst tier with my third least favorite game was your least favorite in Brooklyn game two. As you mentioned, like it, it just a massive blowout. I mean, they were down by 49 at one point and just looked like this team has no shot to beat Brooklyn. It was not looking good. It was, I, after that game, I really was like, man, we might just not be good enough. And yeah, so that one is definitely the, the worst of that tier for me. And we now get into your 20th ranked game in first game of your second worst year. Number 20, I have the game that everybody thought we would win coming off a high from Brooklyn, game one at home against Atlanta. Interesting. I'm, I'm not going to – okay, I'll, I'll just let you, I'll let you explain that a little bit. I have a feeling you'll probably – you won't have that so low. Um, I know it probably wasn't – the worst game, but it, it was just the way we lost, the way we came out flat, the way it just felt like, holy crap, like, you know, we need to go out and get game two. It just, to me, that was just like, um, it just felt like a, a very bad loss, you know? Yeah, and they did. I mean, that game, I was at that game, and they, the crowd was into it. It felt like yeah. a regular season game. They came out without energy. And, I mean, they didn't even blow it at the end. They had a seven-point lead with four minutes left. And, you know, they ended up just kind of letting it slip away. Mm -hmm. I do have that one a little bit, you know, further up, I guess, my rankings, you could say, in terms of favorite to least favorite, because it wasn't one that I didn't, I, even after that game, I didn't feel like, oh my gosh, we're in huge trouble. Like it was the Hawks. It was, we can still beat this team. Trey put up 48. They could barely beat us. And it was like, eh, we'll be all right. So I'm not, that one, I just remember not being super, 
worried about or upset about. So I have that one a little bit higher. We'll move up my rankings to my number 20. And that is game two against Phoenix when they lost 118-108 and went down 2-0. And again, it just similar to that Brooklyn game too. It was like you really started to have doubts of, okay, can we do this? Giannis at least put up a big night with 42, but Chris and Drew sucked 12 or 37 combined. And it was just that, you know, that thought of, is Phoenix just too good? Are they just too smart? Are we going to be able to beat this team? Um, you know, Giannis just put up 42 and we still lost. Are we good enough for this? So that one was another one where I was kind of questioning stuff. So I have that one um, lower. But um, what is your number 19 though? I got that one at my right. 19, one spot ahead of yours. Yeah, those game twos where we just we went down two over both. I mean, again, just the yeah. thought of it's you're close to like you're in desperation mode, basically, just is a scary thought. Um, moving on in this tier, my next highest is uh, game one against the Nets, where we were kind of in the game. Um, this is my 19, by the way. We were kind of in the in the game, but you know, for about two and a half quarters, we were in it. Giannis played okay in this game, um, but pretty much everyone else was bad. Chris and Drew were 13 of 42, and they ended up losing 115, 107. So another loss that was just like, okay, you know, not it, it wasn't particularly devastating, but it definitely didn't give you any any confidence. What is your you're on number 18 for you now? Yeah, 18. I have game one against Phoenix. Okay. Um, mainly a little bit because of the deficit too, like 13 point loss, you know, if they would have kept it a little closer, I have it higher because it's like, okay, you went out on the road game one finals. You don't really expect to win that game, but just the part of like, you know, losing by 13. All right. And then moving on to my number 18 is game one against Phoenix. And yeah, as you said, I mean, I, I have this one as better than the Brooklyn one because it was fun to at least be in the finals for game one. I kind of, I enjoyed it even though they lost. It was, hey, get to see Giannis with that finals patch and mm -hmm. everything yeah. was, you know, it was just fun to kind of be there. And they didn't, you know, they were in that game for a while, unlike the Brooklyn game where the Brooklyn game was really only two, two and a half quarters that they were in it. And then things kind of got ugly. At least they were in the game even into the fourth quarter for Phoenix. And I mean, CP3, I remember after that game, it was like CP3 outplayed Drew like, it wasn't even close. Like, they were not even comparable. And, again, we still had a chance to win that game. So, I wasn't – the sky wasn't falling for me after that game. Um, so, I have that slightly better. But we'll move on. The last game of your second worst here at number 17. Which one is that? Last game for me is Brooklyn game one. A couple of spots ahead of you. Um, obviously, kind of same reasons you said. So. And now the last game of my second worst here – or I should say the best game of my second worst tier is game one against Atlanta, which you had a little bit lower. As I mentioned, I mean, it just, I didn't feel like that was the end of the world. Trey had 48. Um, the Bucks were in it and could have easily had it. I mean, they should have won the game. They were up seven with four minutes left, but wasn't one where I felt like the sky was falling. So um, that, I believe, gets all the losses out of the way. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. six, seven yeah. losses. Yeah, so all the losses out of the way in those Bucks. You know, those are our bottom two tiers, um, ranked a little bit differently between us, but bottom two tiers are all the losses. And now we get into the wins. So you have a tier starting here of five games. Um, yeah. Where What is your number 16 game? 16 for me is a game three against Brooklyn, 86-83. Kind of a bad game. Um, obviously only a three-point when and it was like oh great like we hardly won this game like yeah we made like it was you know we needed it just to make it 2-1 um but just coming out and you know hardly winning hardly putting up points yeah and this tier for me is kind of like like i have this little two mine is only a two game tier of like the ugly wins and um i have actually game one against miami is at 16 for me so um I have that one slightly worse, but I do have the Brooklyn game three at 15. I'm just going to put that in here right away. Um, as you said, it, it was an ugly win. It wasn't one that gave me a ton of confidence. Like, at least they won, got back in the series a little bit. But I remember saying, I'm still not confident we can beat this team in a seven-game series. But in terms of, I mean, going back to my number 16, the Miami game one 
was similar. They didn't play well. Giannis was 10 of 27, was missing free throws. And it looked like, you know, Chris made that jumper at the end, the buzzer beater, to win it. But it wasn't a game. I mean, it looked like Miami was going to give us another series, and it looked like they were going to make things tough on us again. Luckily, that wasn't true. But both of those games just were not, like, the, the most fun wins. They were more concerning wins and ones that didn't give you a ton of confidence. So um, what is your number 15 now? Yeah, um, I also have Miami game one there. I want to put a little – see, this is, like, where I got iffy because I want to put it higher just based off of, like, oh, we hit that, you know, Chris Milton is the game winner. Like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was, wow, okay, good, we won, you know, whatever. But obviously it was an ugly win. Um, <clears throat> so, but, yeah, I have it there. Yeah, to me, like, that – the reason I have the Brooklyn one a little bit higher and they're both in the same tier, but the reason I have the Brooklyn one a little bit – higher and not not as bad is just because that was a bigger win to me you know going up or at least saving your season from potentially being down 3-0 you know pj was getting into it with kd it was it was a little bit more of an exciting game um but that chris milton game winner was awesome props to props to chris milton is good by the way <laughs> um okay so i'm moving on to number 14 on my rankings and this is starting a new tier for me um which i call like the good wins just you know, solid wins. Um, some of these are blowouts. The uh, number fourteen for me is game two against or game two against Atlanta, where they, you know, after losing game one, they just completely blew them out. Trey Young had nine turnovers. They were getting out and running. Outscored the Hawks 43-17 in the second quarter, and you know, it was one that okay, we're back on track. It wasn't a, like a super close game, entertaining game, but it was fun from the Bucks standpoint of we kind of got that game one loss out of our system. Giannis had that beautiful, like, looked like he was going to dunk it and then kind of laid it in. Mm -hmm. That 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 play still has a special place in my heart. So <laughs> that's my number 14. Okay, at 14 for me, I have game five versus Atlanta, 123-112. That low? Yeah. Um, I mean. I get the no Giannis part. Yeah, like, I don't know, just, I don't know. That that was just kind of my instinct of, like, I guess, yeah, no Giannis, too. Yeah, that's do, probably... Do you, hate, do you hate Brooke Lopez? Gosh. <laughs> yeah, he, no. He was massive in that game. That was the Lopez game, wasn't it? Yeah, he had, he had 30, I believe it was 34 on, like, 14. Yeah, he had 33. Shooting. Yeah, 33 at 14 of, like, 18 shooting. And, made, you know, he had some crazy dunks and stuff. It was a fun game. Yeah, I mean, seeing this is where it gets tough because obviously, yeah, with Lopez going off and stuff and no Giannis, that's a huge win. But it was also like it was back home. I guess that's kind of what I looked at too. It's, I kind of put some of the road wins where we needed it a little bit higher. All right, we'll move on to my number 13, which is game two against Miami, which is very similar to that Atlanta game two. Um, they came out and just kind of, Erase any doubt you had. I mean, the game one, they won, but it kind of fell almost like a loss with Miami keeping it so close and making Giannis look bad. They come out in game two and just killed them. And it was another game where they had a huge run in the first half. I mean, out for Miami 46 to 20 in the first quarter and just really stepped on their throat. And Bryn was four or five from three in the first. That was like the Bryn Forbes game. Um, Bryn Sanity was out in full force. Yeah. And yeah, I ended up winning by 34, just like they did in that Hawks uh, game, too. So two similar games. I have them both right next to each other. Uh, 13 for me, I got game two versus Atlanta, as you just had. Um, obviously, for similar reasons, they should have won game one, but came out and did what they needed to in game two. All right, moving up. My number 12 is now game three against Miami. Um, this game was on my birthday. <laughs> so I guess I could have moved it up a few spots higher, but it was just another like good win, um, blowout, and they really realized this series was over. They're really gonna you know get past this team pretty easily, and like nothing crazy special happened in this game. So I mean it, it's not gonna be up too high, but hey, they won on my birthday and they went up three zero on the Heat. It was it was a fun time. So <laughs> that's my number twelve. Give me your number twelve. Uh, number twelve for me. I got game two Miami. So good to just go out there and just kind of kick butt the whole game. Different Forbes game, as we call it. Yeah. Um, 
my number 11. Now, these are all in the same tier. I mean, I, these past three were in the same tier, and I have two more now. Um, my number 11 is game three against Atlanta, where Chris went off in the fourth. And um, at 20 in the fourth, they were trailing for a while in this game, or at least, I mean, it was close. Chris scores 20 in the fourth, 38 for the game, and Giannis had 33. And like huge win because if you don't win that game, you're obviously down two one. Then the Giannis injury happens. It's like you're in a bad place if you're down three one. Mm-hmm. That ended up being a huge, huge win to get. And that was like one of the Chris Middleton games. Um, of you know, he, he was huge in the fourth quarter. And so yeah, I, I, that was a fun game. So I have that one just outside of the top ten. Last one outside the top ten for me. I have Game Four against Miami. Okay. Um, just. Obviously, it was it was nice to finish them, move on, sweep, whatever. But you know, seventeen point win, you're up three zero already. It was kind of just like, all right, they did what needed to be done. So yeah, that is what I have at um, number ten. Is not a game where I have it slightly ahead of that Chris Milton game because I don't know. I feel like the Chris Milton game was more fun, but that Miami game was just the you know finishing them off, sweeping them felt so good. And they actually were they played pretty bad for the first three quarters of that game, and um, they at least you know it was the first half. Sorry, the first half they played pretty bad, and then really turned it on in the third quarter and fourth quarter. They kind of finished them off, and yeah, I just I have that one slightly ahead of the Atlanta game three. I want to put that game three higher, but I don't really know what else to put it over because I I want to put that clinching game a little bit ahead of it. But that's mm-hmm. my tier right there. I have a break. Um, you just started your new tier with Miami game four, so who else is yeah. in that tier now? Next, I have game three in Atlanta. Um, I I guess I just have that one a little bit higher. Well, I mean, was that one, two one spots? Spot. One spot. Um, I mean, just because you know they needed to go out and get the win, they did win by eleven, whatever. Um, so after that, it was kind of just like, okay, now you know you have a chance to go up three one going back home. If you do drop one, at least you already got the one on the road. So that was a big one to get. By the way, real quick in the middle of this, I do want to give a shout out to at. Alexander Flam. He was kind of the inspiration behind this. I saw he tweeted like some tier Bucks playoff rankings stuff. So I was like, oh, that'd be a good idea of something to do. Um, so he was kind of the inspiration for this. So I wanted to give him a quick, quick shout out there as we move into our top 10. Um, I'm starting a new tier here. And it is crazy to think about how like we both have that. I mean, we have that Atlanta game three. I have it at 11. You have it at 10. Um, it is crazy. That, like, we really did have that many playoff games that were just like even better than that game. That, yeah. that Atlanta game three was a, like a fun, huge game where like usually that would be like a the top or second best playoff game of one of our you know playoff runs. And it's like yeah. we, we had like ten games better than that. It's just crazy to think about. Yeah. My number nine now, starting my new tier of like I call this one like series changing wins. My my number nine is game four against Brooklyn, where they won by eleven. Um, and this is when you really realize, okay, like we're back in the series. Kyrie did get hurt, which like added to the like hope of okay, we could win the series. Um, but this was their first really good game of that series. I mean, they they sucked in the first two, didn't really play well in the third, but still won. And now they this game, you know, Giannis scored thirty four, PJ had thirteen, and you know he held KD to another poor shooting game. He was nine of twenty five in this game. Bucks won by eleven. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was, it was even Giannis is like. Giannis was good in game one, but they got blown out. He sucked in game two. He wasn't even good in game three. Game three was that game where Giannis was shooting a ton of threes kind of randomly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was one of eight from three, and people were getting frustrated. But this was like the first, of, okay, like good, good, good Giannis in this series um, where they won. So that's my first game of this tier, just you know, number nine of the overall rankings. What is your number nine? Nine, I have Miami game three. Um Obviously, big road win, controlled, you know, pretty much the whole game, I think, from what I remember. I mean, they just came out somewhat hot and just, you know, coasted to the win um, and went up 3-0. So. A little bit high for me. Even on my birthday, I didn't have it that high. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll keep going. And my number eight is, again, in this kind of series-changing wins tier, is game five against Atlanta, which you had at – where did you have it? All the way up at 14. I have it at 8. That was a fun game, dude. And I 
I would have even higher, honestly, if it wasn't for like Giannis being out. It just kind of, and you didn't know at this time what his status was. So it was like, we might, it, this game might not even matter. Like if he can't come back for the finals, it might just be like, who really cares? Um, but I mean, Brooke had 33, 14 of 18 shooting. Chris had 26, Drew had 25, Bobby had 22. There was no Trey Young, which took away from it a little bit, but it was still a big win. Um, the place was crazy for that game. So that was a fun game for me. I had it at number eight. So um, give me your number eight, huh? Okay, so now I have game four against the Suns to tie the series up two to two at Golden Phoenix. Yes. Uh, I just disagree. I disagree. Home win, six point game. That was the Giannis block game. And you have it at eight? Man, I mean, there's multiple games up here that I just think lead to. I guess, I mean, I know that is the finals, but like, we'll see. I, I don't know. I think you can make cases for some of these higher than that. Yeah. All right. My number seven. My number seven is now game three against Phoenix, where Giannis put up his uh, second straight forty-point game, and it was a huge win again to get back in the series. But to me, game four was a lot better. And not. I mean, I don't want to say a lot better, but game four was just it had that kind of play of the Giannis block, and. Chris played extremely well in that game. Game three was like, I mean, Giannis played really well. They got back into it. Booker sucked. Um, but I don't know. Tying it up at two, like, game, you know, that was like a really exciting moment. And I just, I don't know how you can have Phoenix game three over Phoenix game four, personally. But <laughs> I want to hear your your explanation for it. But we'll move on to your, so that was my number uh, seven. We'll move on to your number seven. Well, my number seven, I have game four against Brooklyn <clears throat> that you just had at nine. Okay. Um, kind of the same thing as, as I um, said with the past one, two, tie it up 2-2, two, two, going on the road. And I guess my thing for, like, seeing this is where I know I, when I texted you, it's like entertainment-wise, yeah, I probably should have that Phoenix game easily top four or five. But my thought was like, okay, now we tied it up 2-2. Two, two. Like, it was important, but we were still down going on the road. So, you know, there's some games I think are more important wise. So if we wanted to, you know, fun at like entertainment and how crazy it was, obviously like that had probably the best plays of the block and God, what was the other play in that game? They had the block and then there was like the steal at the end where C yeah. lost the ball. You know, rips it from Chris Paul. Yeah. And, Holiday, and then the lob to Giannis. Yeah. Um, so I mean, yeah, that's definitely Well the the lob the lob to Giannis was game five. But game four was like Chris Chris. Uh, had some layup at the end with like 30 seconds left. But there was like a steal. Like CB3 lost the ball again. Did it in game four and game five. But game four, he like lost the ball. And then um, we got it to Chris who like scored. But I still I don't understand how you can have game three of Phoenix over game four. But my number six now, and this is the last game of this tier of like series changing wins or big wins, whatever you want to call it. Um, game six against Brooklyn. I thought this was a Super fun game. The crowd was really, really into this game. And just like 14 at game seven was a really exciting moment. And, and I mean, Chris showed up in this game, 38 points. Giannis had 30. And yeah, like this was, for whatever reason, like I just remember this game being like one of the best crowds of the playoffs for me. Like it was, the place was really, really, really into it. And then after that game ended, the whole just anticipation of that game seven was really, really fun to you know, experience that. So that's my top six, or that's my uh, number six and the, the last game of that tier for me. Mm -hmm. Now we move on to your number six and the start of your second best tier. Yeah. This is kind of my A tier of like games that um, just felt, you know, like kind of needed or, whatever huge wins so, relatively um so this is now where i have game three of um yes yeah, against the suns see like i totally get what you're saying could easily move up game four however my mindset would just kind of like you're down 2-0 going home so to take that lead to win by 20 it was kind of like a reassurance like yes we can like we're back some of you know almost back in the series but you could say the same with four, I guess. Like, okay, now we're back in it. We tied it. 
Um, but just coming out and winning by 20, that's why I put it. But I yeah. understand. My next, so I'm, we're moving on to my second best tier um, or tier two, whatever. And my number five overall is game four against Phoenix, which, as you mentioned, um, I mean, I have it a little bit higher than you because of the block and just tying it up at two is really like just bigger to me than making it 2 1. And the end of that game was really exciting. The crowd was super into it. Um, so I have that in the top five. Mm -hmm. But now we get to your, and again, that's the, that's the first, I have two games in the second tier, and then I have three games in the first tier. So we go now to your top five, your fifth game in your second tier now. Uh, game five, I have game six versus Brooklyn. Huge yeah. home win, force game seven. Um, I mean, that's all that has to really be said. Win by 15 at home, and you just, you know, go out there and like, hey, we got a chance, got to win in Brooklyn. It's going to be huge. So, All right, moving on to number four on my list, game six against Atlanta. This is the <laughs> best game of my second tier, so just missing that first tier cut. Is Atlanta game six, clinching to go to the finals for the first time in forty-seven years, and like this was a this was a, a, a tears game as I like to call it. like I, like this was like I started crying you know there are a few games you're gonna start crying and like going to the finals was one of them so that it's got to be right up there for me it was even you know better than uh, the block game like that happened in, in in the finals and that was super exciting but like I don't know just going to the finals was a really special moment. And at that time, you kind of had that news of Giannis is my, probably going to be coming back. So it was like this excitement of we can do this and we're going to the NBA Finals. So that one for sure is up there for me. Just missing that first tier, which that first tier has some has some dandies in it. Yeah. Um, we'll move on. You have two more left in this tier and then a two-game first tier. So what is your number four? Um, I have the same number four, so I'm curious to see if we have the same three. I have a feeling we will, but we'll see with one and two. Yeah, I'm not sure. One and two might be – I don't know. One and two are going to be close. Like, I don't know. But <laughs> for sure, I think game three – or the thir number three on our overall list, and this one I do have in the first tier. I moved it first tier because it's just the iconic play at the end. Game five against Phoenix. Um, the lob. Yeah, that was with the lob. The Valley Oop, as we say, um, or as they call it now. You know, that game, that, I was at Fiserv, like, at the watch party for that game, and the place went nuts. You saw him stare at the camera afterwards. <laughs> yeah. It just, it was, it was unbelievable. Like, I, my, my soul just, like, left my body at that point. I was like, this is not happening right now. <laughs> but a weird game, because they trailed by 16 after the first quarter. It looked like yeah. it was, it was going to be a blowout. Like, I was like, man, like, we're just going to have to win the last two, I guess. But like four minutes into that second quarter, the <laughs> deficit was gone. Like I don't yeah, know right how back. it happened, but they immediately ended that. Or they immediately like kind of cut into that deficit and made it a game right away, and ended up leading at half. The Suns played out of their minds. They were sixty-eight percent from three. They Booker, CP3, and Aiden all played well, but they still just couldn't beat us because for the first time in like ever. Giannis, Chris, and Drew played well together. <laughs> Giannis had 32 on 14 of 23. Chris had 29 of 12 of 23. Drew had 27 and 13. Um, 27 points, 13 assists, that is, on 12 of 20. Like, they all just played fantastic. And from what I remember, it was kind of like, I, I think it was Giannis was really good first half, and then it turned into, like, Chris playing well in the third. It, it, they kind of, like, took turns in terms of who was playing well. Um I don't remember exactly what the order was I, off the top of my head. I can't remember, but they, someone was really good in the first half. Someone was good in the third quarter. And I think, I think Drew was good in the, in the fourth. Um, and they just, you realize slowly as the game was going on, you're like, they're all playing really, really well. So that game was, I mean, again, the, the ending to that game was iconic and we almost blew that game, had a lead for like the majority of the fourth quarter. All of a sudden they cut it to two and mm -hmm. They have, you know, Booker's got the ball with 15 seconds left, and I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. This is going to end very poorly. Drew steals the ball. Lobbed it. The, the audacity to lob that ball yeah. was – it was like I, – I I remember he steals the ball. I was with, you know, our friend Preston at Pfizer Forum. <laughs> he steals the ball, and I'm thinking, okay, like, great. They're just going to follow us, but, like, we're in a really good spot. So I kind of, like, turn around and start, like, jumping around, and I, like – kind of look up, like, just to make sure nothing's happening. Like, okay, they're just going to fall, right? 
and I see him like looking at the rim and Giannis is running. I'm like, no, <laughs> and the rest is history. But um, is that what you have as number three as well? Yeah, I do. Um, was this the game where Booker should have fouled out or is that game? That was game four, four against, okay. at home. That was the home See, game. Yeah. I kind of get four and five. I watched both of the – well, one of them I watched. I was in Vegas. That was game four. Um, and then game five, I was at home. Um, kind of – they shouldn't mesh together in the brain, but just with all these big plays, whatever you want to say, you know, like obviously two steals with Chris Paul. Um, yeah, I mean, same thing for me. I'm sitting at home game five and like, I, my, I had kind of like two things. I'm like, I see Giannis, I'm like, shit, is he going to go for the lob or is, is Holly just going to back it up? Like either way, you know, like, I mean, the lob would be super risky, but that'd be like, lob it, lob it. And he throws it up. And then like you said, the stare at the camera is like, holy crap. And yeah. now just literally like the day you're like, holy crap, we're going to take it, go back home. And then like, I remember they cut to um, Deer District after that. And it was going insane. I was like, "Oh my god!" Like, and then again at the at the arena, they you know the play happens. Everyone's going insane, and you look up and see the replay, and you see Giannis stare, and the whole crowd was like, "Oh!" Like everyone was like realized that he stared, like he stared at the camera, and it was just the most like badass moment. Yeah. And again, this was that was the moment where I was like, "We are going to win the title!" Like, holy crap! Mm-hmm. And. That's just, I mean, again, that's why I moved into that top tier of like, that's a moment I'll remember forever for sure. These these last three are all moments I'll remember forever. And um, so, yeah, just an insane game. But yeah, as you mentioned, though, we didn't even talk about game four where Booker should have, he had, what, seven fouls in that game? Eight fouls? Yeah. Um, it was and, he was, and he was still, you know, John at the ref like he usually does. Yeah, you know, he, 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 like, of it's he like, like grabs Drew. And then he's arguing for a jump ball. I'm like, yeah. you should be you should be thanking the heavens that you're even in that. <laughs> but anyways, um, we now move on to you're in our, your top tier now, and I'm still in my top tier. Mm-hmm. My number two, not number one, is game six against Phoenix, the clinching game. <laughs> it's like I never thought I would have this at number two. If you ever told me that Giannis would score 50 in a finals clinching game, I would think for sure I'd have it at number one. And I think part of the reason I have number one at number one is because we were, you know, I, I was at game six too. It's not like I wasn't there, but part of the reason I have number one at number one is like the craziness of that game and yeah. the fact that we were there, you know, on, in a road arena. But still, back to game six at, against Phoenix, obviously going to be, you know, forever probably the greatest, one of the greatest Bucks games of all time. And Another like they, they weird weird game because they started off and it looked like it was going to be a blowout. Um, they were up, I don't know, I want to say sixteen or something in that first quarter, but then they only scored thirteen in the whole second quarter. They trailed at halftime all of a sudden, and it was like, oh crap! Like we actually have some work to do. The first quarter seemed like it was going to be okay. We're going to party. We're going to you know going to be a blowout, and we get to just celebrate. And it was like not so fast. And Giannis in that second half, thirty three points, was making jumpers, was hitting everything. 17 of 19 on free throws for the game and you know the whole post game celebration and everything was just again something i will never ever ever forget Mm -hmm. um by the way i just realized i still have grace Allen trade up on the screen (laughs) (laughs) should have had bucks playoff games ranked on there but um (laughs) anyways uh my so game six like that's it's just a moment i'll remember forever so that is my number two, and um, I'm, I'm interested to see if you have that as number two. Number <laughs> I do not. I have game seven at Brooklyn. Okay. Um, but I mean, to me, this is just like a total way of how you look at it. Like both – that's why I put them at one, two, because to me they're somewhat interchangeable. Like the championship in itself is, you know, the number one moment, so to say, like super iconic, Giannis drops 50. But – Going into Brooklyn, obviously being there, you know, like the heckling and like security guard, you know, like yelling back at us before the game and after the game, whatever. And um, I mean, you know, going into overtime, getting the win, it was just like everything was everything was huge. But I felt like I had to put the championship one. Um, So, yeah. yeah. So I have I do have, you know, Brooklyn game seven as my number one. um, Just. It was the moment that in this I, I didn't think you know immediately we're gonna win the title, but it was the moment I realized holy crap, like this team looks like they're they're different. They're you know, this is like 
for taking that next step as a franchise and being there was so like and just the craziness of that game that's what really was it was it for me if they would have just won by like 10 i definitely would have game six against phoenix number one but the i've never felt that before like that level of nervousness that level of like i cannot even breathe right now us all three of us that were there were just we could not even handle it and you know they went from in the first quarter or the first half they were down nine um they were down six at number half at, at the half quickly open the second half on a 7-0 run to take the lead. And, you know, then in that fourth quarter, it's like Katie has that and one to put the nets up by five with about five and a half left. It looked like we were done. Crowd was going insane. Giannis airballed a free throw. The crowd was going even more insane. Harden banks in that three to go up five with four minutes left. Again, it feels like it's over. Yeah. Um, yeah. They had some bad calls down the stretch. And it just felt like, man, this is – we're going to be so close and it's just not going to be quite enough. Drew sucked the whole game. And it was like, we're going to have to deal with all these takes about how Drew Holiday is not good enough and we're going to have to trade Drew Holiday and all this. And he turns it on late, has like three straight buckets, and all of a sudden we're up four with under a minute left. But then, you know, Brooke shot clock violation, Katie hits the shot. When Katie hit that shot. When Katie hit that shot, it was like this moment of like, you saw the ball. Like, I remember I was like, I had my phone up like recording it, but I was kind of just watching. And my mind was like, if he misses, it's over. Like, so I see the ball go up, and I'm like, if that doesn't go in, it's over. And it goes in. And I'm like, you have got to. And then we kind of all thought it was a three. And for, like, three to four seconds, my, you know, again, I just had, like, this out-of-body experience of, like, numbness and just this is not real. We just lost. And I looked up, you know, and it changed to, I don't remember what the score was at the time. Was it 109, 109? And I was like, oh, like, at least it's tied. But also in my mind, I'm like, we're still not probably going to win this game. Like, I still was really upset because I'm like, you're one shot away from winning this game, and of course it goes in. Thought the whole overtime we were going to lose, couldn't score in overtime until Giannis finally made that hook shot at the end. And then Chris gives us the lead with 40 seconds left. Katie misses, and the Milwaukee Bucks advance. We were going insane, dude. Yeah. And just that, that feeling of, like, holy shit. Like, it finally ended and, like, just sigh of relief and going insane. That game was probably my favorite sporting event I've ever been to. Absolutely. Same for me. It, see, and it's, it's crazy because that wasn't even like Eastern Conference Finals. Obviously, yeah. it wasn't the finals. It was just to go to the Eastern Conference Finals, but it was the fact of beating Brooklyn, beating that big three, even though Kyrie wasn't playing, um, doing it on the road. Um, yeah, man, that was, that was crazy. And, yeah, like, you know, Drew Holiday coming down, finally, I don't want to say – somewhat clutching up but like just you know finally doing what we need him to and bro oh, he clutched up oh he yeah, clutched up. i mean he did yeah but he, was, hit a, he hit a three and yeah. he comes down and hits a jumper and then he comes down and hits line. another jumper and i was like we were like i remember again we were just kind of like panicking like it it went so quickly from like yeah. we're done to oh my god we're gonna win and then it was quickly shifted back to like we're done and it's just that the shifting between this season's over and we're gonna maybe win the finals was like you can't it just was crazy, but thank the good Lord we won that game. And, <laughs> dude, we are NBA Finals champs. So, hey, fun episode. Um, <laughs> recapping, you know, in case you missed it, we recapped some um, free agency moves, and then we ranked these Bucks playoff games. Uh, real quick, my top five was number one, the Brooklyn game seven. Number two, the Phoenix game six clinching game. Number three, game five with the, against Phoenix with the Valley Oop. Uh, number four, when we clinched to go to the finals. And number five, the game with the block, um, Phoenix game four. And then yours was number one, the clinching game. Number two, Brooklyn game seven. Number three, the value game. Number four, clinching to go to the finals. And number five, game six against Brooklyn. So slightly different rankings for us. But, um, man, I think we can all agree there were just some iconic games we will remember forever. Absolutely. And, again, hey, in case you needed a reminder, the Bucks are NBA champs. <laughs> but hey, good to good to get back on the podcast with you, and yes. we'll have another episode pretty quickly here. Um, start to get more stuff, and season's coming back soon. Packer season's coming up soon, so we'll have more and more stuff for you guys. But thank you for tuning in, and we will catch you guys next time. Go Bucks!